everyone. Welcome to Forum Friday. Forum Fridays are about what's going on with Mark Florka. Welcome, Mark. Hi, everybody. What's going on with the forums on LinkedIn and Facebook? Well, the, the most activity again is is primarily on Facebook. That seems to be yeah, we everybody's be getting, favorite place to gravitate to. Yeah, we seem yeah. to be getting like 10, 20 new members every few days. Yes, it's been growing leaps and bounds. I mean, we're we're getting pretty close to a thousand if we haven't passed it already. Right. Um, wow. And Great so job, Mark. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and just trying to, you know, make everyone feel welcome and you know keep reminding people like you know let's let's all just be friendly and polite right um i realize english isn't always the uh first language for everyone um but just you know we sometimes just take a deep breath and it's like it's it's not a contest it's not a battle it's uh we're just all trying to share well, with each other a lot other, of people so, um, are really um, actually very friendly and helpful yes on yeah it's been really good yeah. i mean I have not had to kick anyone out or suspend anyone yet. So yeah, that's and really I think good. everyone's playing by your rules that you set up. I mean, like answering yeah. two questions, right? Yes, yeah. I, um, and I, I give them the benefit of the doubt because especially what I noticed is with Facebook, with the groups, if you are um, assigning onto a group using a phone, like a smartphone, that you have to scroll to see the second question you because uh, oh. the submit button actually covers it up. And oh. so, but there is for me as an admin, there's a, what I do is, is I, I decline it with a, a reason and basically send them a short note saying, you know, please agree to the rules. And, uh, and that's the main one is that we, we need, we need people to agree to the rules to make sure that they understand that it uh, these things need to be abide by and that they've agreed to it so that we don't get into a squabble if they don't follow the rules and get banned then they they understand why they're being banned right um but usually we've we've only had a couple of commercials that i've had to remove um and i again i there also i sent them a note to to contact joanna if they wanted to promote their product or something like that right um so and, there um, is actually um a few discussion threads that i would like to cover with you mm -hmm. um yep. the first one involves um pretzel production Yes, this one is, this one is so cool. I love these where an entrepreneur is really trying to do something new and different. Um, and so um, this is a young lady or young by my standards anyway. Um, Younger but, uh, than you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a woman in India and she's from Mumbai and um she i guess she spent some time in the us and she's familiar with pretzels and she thinks pretzels would be a good snack opportunity in india and so she's trying to investigate ways the best ways to do this right and of course investing in equipment for a pretzel line that's probably a multi-million dollar situation right um because it's 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 quite a lot you know even with a, a shorter tunnel oven because one of the things with pretzels is is first you bake and then you have a long drying period mm -hmm. otherwise they shatter right you and um mm -hmm. so it has to be done correctly drying and so um, crucial. um she is familiar with uh reading bakery systems in pennsylvania um, who uh, make a lot of, uh, you know, equipment for this, but most importantly for situations like this is they have a fantastic pilot uh, area. So they can set up for just about anything. And um, I've actually run pretzels there myself a number of years ago. Um, and uh, they're very, very helpful people to work with and stuff. So she's exploring different things, you know, and to also c keep in mind freight i mean is it going to be cheaper to bring it from the us or from europe or africa or australia if she's going to bring product into india right as far as if she's not going to make it there at some point if the product is successful it's probably going to be more cost effective to produce in india and then she may need investors for that uh, but um, yeah. another member um, who's been uh, been posting quite a bit in our groups uh, 
by the name of Yuri. Um, he has uh, also uh, recommended as well as I that um, different flavors like Indian flavors might be good. So, you know, like imagine a curry pretzel, right? Oh or my stuff goodness. Like that. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, How about a uh, mango chutney pretzel? Yes. Yeah. There'd be all kinds of great ideas, right? That Yum. they could do. So that's one's really good. Um, and every, anybody who has other ideas or resources in India, Australia, um, you know, the Middle East and Africa, Please oh, do even, chime in. Even Pakistan um, and East Europe would have yep. pretzel production capabilities. So let's yep. hope, you know, someone reaches out to her and offer up some line time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that, so that one's really fun. Yeah. Great. Um, next, I wanted to ask about um, pizza. What's going on with pizza? Well, we have a relatively new member is, is asking about where they can learn the basics about pizza. Well, you've come to the right place, uh, Bakerpedia. So if you go to bakerpedia.com and you'll see a menu at the top if you're on a computer or tablet and you can collect, you can click on processes. If you're on a phone, there's, there's like the three bars on the left where you click on it and you get a menu of all the things. Um, and so under processes, you there's an alphabetical list of all types of analytical and production processes and you click on pizza and it'll give you all of the basic sort of generic information, typical pizza, you know, the main nutrition components like carbohydrates and fat and water, um, you know, roughly water absorption rates for the flour or things like that. So it'll give you a general idea about the components and composition and processing for pizza. And there's some, uh, as of course, with all these articles always on Bakerpedia, there is a list of resources of different books and things like that that can be consulted for more in-depth knowledge and, and things like that. Um, yeah, and I would like to point out as well, if you are in a gluten-free field, we have a Bakerview seminar on uh, gluten-free pizza. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any harm in offering a gluten-free option because nope. that trend still holds really strong. Oh, and that's, so it's that's available one, on Academy if you're interested. And I think that was the one sponsored by Arla, I believe. And um, it's, think it's so, really yeah. the, the, the whey protein that they have to design for that is really good. It, it yep. produces a beautiful product and easy to work with too. Not just that it's a good product, but it's, for somebody who's used to working with pizza dough, it's it's m much more natural than a lot of the other more liquidy kind of options that have been out there. Correct. All right, next, I wanted to ask about the discussion on brownies and sugar mm. substitutes. Yep, this is, this is quite an interesting one because it's something that um, we don't always consider when we're less familiar with, uh, you know, having worked with these materials, right? And uh, so some of us have, and but uh, you know, granted, a lot of us haven't. And and so this is a, a member who is making, as how her husband making a brownie using maltitol. And when they, uh, for whatever reason, not sure why, but when they they had to switch from maltitol to erythritol. Um, the natural instinct is, well, erythritol looks like sugar because it's very granular. It's sort of crystalline. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you think like, oh, this is going to work really good because it's going to, when you beat it, it's probably going to aerate and things like that. And um, it doesn't do a very good job. And uh, and then on top of it, so first of all, his, his brownies got kind of flat and, and squishy. They didn't aerate this the same way. And then the other thing was that he had all these white things inside. And so, you know, he was thinking like this, this can't be mold because, you know, that's the, the first concern everybody always has, right? It's because it kind of looks kind of whitish and things like that. Well, what happens is erythritol is, does not go into solution very well. Um, it doesn't dissolve easily. And there is so little water in a brownie that even in the in the mixing process it it doesn't aerate well uh, because it, it's a little bit larger than sugar the crystals and stuff and so it um it doesn't go into solution and it it just makes the brownie heavy and it collapses on itself and then it leaves these white sort of lines which is the the sugar or the uh, sorry the erythritol crystals that are still undissolved 
So when working with erythritol, um, particularly in low moisture situations or short mixing times, you have to take the time to put the erythritol into solution first, um, which is done in warm water. Uh, it needs to be, be stirred in warm water and it, uh, it, takes, it takes a little bit of time. It's not like sugar, it doesn't dissolve right away, um, but you can make it work that way. And, uh, uh, and then, you know, there were some other recommendations as well to, to also add some um, uh, MCP, um, monocalcium phosphate, Mm -hmm. to the leavening system, which will give a quicker upfront reaction to help boost the uh, the brownie a little bit without making it too cakey, right? Um, so that so what is the conclusion uh, on the difference between mannitol and erythritol on volume? Um, why, why is there such a huge difference? Uh, well, because the the, the uh, maltitol is, goes into solution or is a liquid product. It's often sold as a liquid um, or if it's crystalline maltitol um, it, it goes into solution much quicker um, but it so has... the solution part is what causes better volume yes yeah because it um, it doesn't increase the density of the batter in the same way um, because these these heavy erythritol crystals are weighing down it's on dense. the batter and yeah. won't allow it to to expand very easily. So when it's all Do in solution, you have a preference on which one to use. Um, I prefer erythritol, um, primarily uh, because of the the sort of with maltitol. I find there's a, uh, an not objectionable. It, it there's a there's sort of a bit of a flavor note that I dislike. Right. Um, and um, there are uh, um, more uh, irritable bowel syndrome type uh, issues with maltitol um, because it is a polyol. So it's, it's, it's like a sugar alcohol. Um, and so there's, there's easier, you know, you go a little too high on maltitol, you can quite easily cause uh, gastric distress and diarrhea. Um, yeah. Erythritol is more tolerable by most. Um, Erythritol is is a lot less sweeter than sugar. Um, that's that's why it's often blended with stevia, um, because the erythritol is only I think about twenty percent as sweet as sugar. Um, but it has this um, interesting cooling effect. Um, it's sort of not quite minty, but sort yeah, of a little bit like, like dextrose, right? right? Um, and uh, so you put too much into a cookie, then all of a sudden you feel like you're eating a cookie and, and, and minty chewing gum or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> so don't use it too much. Yeah. Mix it up with other kinds of uh, artificial sweeteners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Just great discussions all around. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one on the uh, textural issues with crackers. Yep. Um, and there, there's a few different approaches. So somebody wanted, they were saying crackers and or wafers. And so crackers usually tend to be low or no sugar and wafers can sometimes have a lot of sugar in it. Um, and so there was a lot of different solutions and ideas suggested. Um, the one overarching thing um, that needs to be maintained in these types of products is low water activity. They need to be very dry um, and so, uh, and, and low in water activity as well. So you definitely want to be below 0.65. Some of them are actually like around 0.4 most of the time. Yeah. Um, 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.35, yeah. 0.4. Yeah. And then 2% uh, or less on moisture. Um, right. so with, with crackers in particular, there's in, in high production situations, it's, it's multiple tunnel ovens that they go through. Is a, in terms of a drying line. So there's a bake and then there's a dry, like a cooling dry, a slight bake again, and then a, a sort of a drying process again. And um, it, it can be quite uh, time consuming to make to uh, by scratch and things, because then you have to have either two ovens or, or take it in and out of the oven constantly till you get them nice and dry if you're baking them sort of at home or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is sugar, increasing the sugar to, and, and you provided a link in that conversation too, as we, you know, we talked about processes. Um, the other thing is something like glass transition. So with sugar, 
You want to understand the glass transition process that is happening during cooking and baking. And um, that is having the right level of sugar and the right temperature and time, not just for browning, but enough to melt the sugar so it can transition and form a glass where it, it crystallizes right. differently in this mm -hmm. sheet. And that gives you that nice snap, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's been very good. And cornstarch has been the other suggestion as well in the cracker type situations in terms of getting a drier product with, with yes, less protein. To dry it up definitely yep. helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's some great, great discussions on there. Um, there mm -hmm. is one more I wanted to touch on, and this is called a sablé. A sablé, yep. A sablé. A... Yeah. I'm learning things. What is a sablé? Well, <laughs> sablé is a is a French pastry term. Um, the the word sablé actually translates into English as sand, um, and so I can relate to it because I did my training in Germany. And the same type of, of cookie dough, it's a, it's a cookie is essentially, in German is called a, a crumbly dough, um, mürbeteig. And mürbe is a, is a German term for something that is very tender and crumbles very easily, right? So sablé is, a, is like shortbread. It's a cookie that is tender and uh, but has a nice sort of bit of crispness to it. Um, nice. And so um, this person uh, this member's uh, challenges they're using maltitol as the sweetener and so because it's not an overly sweet cookie like a like a typical north american sugar cookie it's it's mm -hmm. much lower in sugar um not mm -hmm. it doesn't qualify as a low sugar product per se but um it, it uses less sugar and um and so with he we can use maltitol in that to still produce a a good product and what's happening though is when he spreads jam on the cookie after it's baked is the cookie gets very soft and soggy uh, because now the uh, the carbohydrates are just drawing all of the moisture out of the jam um, and especially some of the retail jams they are they're mostly water right so um, uh, you know look at the ingredient declaration sometimes right and we we know what it's made of right um, yeah. And so there's uh, been some great ideas is to uh, to like thicken the jam by maybe uh, adding some glycerin to it, which mm -hmm. will not transfer the moisture. Basically um, make the two systems similar in water activity. Once the water activities yep. are similar, then there, were, there will be no water transfer. Yep. Yeah. And the, the other uh, option is uh, which was less desirable, but in this case is a moisture barrier. Um, and a moisture barrier, the, the one that is used a lot in, in pastry baking and stuff would be chocolate. Um, but chocolate, of course, has got a lot of sugar in it and it's high in calories because of the fat. And that's one of the things they want to avoid. Um, so you could maybe, you know, spray it with a fully hydrogenated fat, perhaps. Oh, um, yeah, delicious. may not taste so great, right? <laughs> um, or um, some people have sometimes had, have had success with um, brushing egg or other protein mm -hmm. solutions like, like a soy protein or wheat protein isolate onto the cookie before baking so that this protein seals and creates a, a, a barrier layer on top. It's not as impermeable as, say, fat would be, but it helps. It helps reduce yeah. that that transfer of moisture right um so that was yeah, that's been yeah. a good conversation i mean it's been well. done you know commercially already so yep. understanding that technology you know that is not a new technology it's just mm -hmm. understanding if you have the right kinds of ingredients in, at hand yep. yeah. exactly yeah. yeah that's great well that's all i have to ask about in terms of the forums um and do you have anything new that's going on, Mark? Oh, well, me personally, lots. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I want to point for out. for Baked in Science and all that? Um, what do we have for, to look forward to? Yes, for Baked in Science, I have an episode coming up. I, I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with a relatively new contact of mine. Um, is uh, he's a, He has done been doing consulting for about... 20 years uh, throughout the baking and food industry. And uh, we had a really good conversation about all of the changes that are happening through 
um, acquisitions and mergers and, and, you know, different product lines, how they're changing and stuff. And so uh, his name's Jerry Smiley um, and uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy, very nice, friendly guy. And uh, so we have that coming up on uh, Baked in Science. That's um, awesome. And I have a Baker Influencer video coming up in about a month. Uh, putting together, it's going to be really interesting. Is um, uh, information on you know talking about shelf life instead of looking at mold, looking at the other aspects of shelf life, and that's texture. texture. Um, you know, keeping our cookies crunchy, keeping them soft, keeping yep. bread soft, and, and things like that and compared a couple of commercial items and stuff out of the store. And so yeah. that's going to be really good. I've got some really good video footage. I have to finish editing up so we can see how the instrument is performing the physical work and how the that is captured on the computer to for us to interpret and be able to see quantifiable information about texture um and so it's uh, looking forward oh, that to that sounds so interesting i can't wait to see what you do with the texture tech technologies um instruments and um if you have anything else out there that you want to ask mark or want my input on it please go to our baking industry professional pages on facebook and linkedin yep. yeah right. drop us a line and we we'd be happy to uh put something together with you um so yeah. we're we're always looking for new and interesting ideas um and giving you the opportunity to share your ideas with us yeah. well thanks for coming on today mark my pleasure talk See to you, you again soon. soon take care bye bye